Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. The Lord spoke to me a couple weeks ago and he said this, you know, some of you were with us a long time ago know how we used to flow uh, in, in a church. And, you know, you get, you get doing other things things or getting going to other directions. And the Lord said, go back. Go back. Connect to the flow. And you're going to see it. You're going to see change. And it's just like Brother Hagin. A number of years ago, um, back in the 90s, he was going to start having what they call Holy Ghost meetings. Y'all remember that? And so he, he said this. He said, I, I, it's going to take me several of these meetings to get back to where I, to the flow I used to be in. You see? Because you, you, you get busy doing other things. You get busy letting things lay, lay aside. But we're not going to let you. We're going to jump right in. Hallelujah. I said, so you know, Wednesday night's going to mainly be Bible study. We're going to be more, more open. We're not going to do, uh, I'm endeavoring, you know, sometimes you want to, but I'm gonna endeavor, we're not going to do long series on Sunday mornings. We're going we're to be more open to, you know, different messages, maybe, maybe more, more along the lines of encouragement and building and, um, and flow in the Holy Spirit. And then Wednesday night be Bible study. We're getting some good Bible study in. Oh, oh you, just, you just need to come to Bible study. We're getting good Bible study in. I mean, I'm blessing myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And Penny, uh, you got whatever you needed. <laughs> I want to need another shot. Hallelujah. Is this little light helping? This little light? Is it helping Brother Bill? Not helping you any, is it? Brother Bill, needs, he wants that backdrop. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to, like I said, we got the, we got the backdrop stands. We got to find that we're going to try to get a, a custom-made one, but I think we're just going to go ahead and buy some generic thing for, for the in, interim time until we come up with a custom-made backdrop. <clears throat> we could land on that decision. So we'll, we'll get something. If we get black muslin or room darkening material or something, because the glory, it's not really the glory back there. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. You know, Jesus came, the Bible says, and we beheld, uh, and the Word was made flesh, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Son. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And, and he, he, the Word of God was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. Amen? That word dwelt there in John 1, 14 is tabernacled. He carried the glory to humanity. Oh, thank God we can be carriers of the glory. Amen? Well, let's go ahead and receive our Sunday morning time of an offering. In the offering envelope, raise your hand. If you send it by square cash, go ahead and send it. Some of you have already sent your stuff in this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I got, I, I, uh, this morning early, I was going cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I thought, my goodness, praise the Lord. We want to welcome all those watching. Uh, I guess you're watching still uh, uh, from our live streaming. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you. Uh, at this time, if you want to, um, you, can, you can go to Square Cash. That's a little green app with a little dollar sign in it. And um, I guess they'll put out there how you can hook up to it. And uh, you go to our PayPal account. Um, or you can just mail it to us, you know, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. And, uh, you know, we, that's the old-fashioned way, but we, it, it works. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want to be a blessing and help us here, praise God, and be a part of what we're doing, that's good. Uh, but if you're at home watching, we just, we're glad to have you with us today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody ready? Father, we thank you for the time. We thank you for the offering. We thank you that the people are blessed as they, as they sow into the kingdom of God. Thank you that heaven's windows are open. You empty out of them room enough they don't have uh, more blessings. They have room enough to receive. There are delights in the land. The devourer is rebuked for their sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers, and receive that. As soon as the ushers receive that, children's church are, are dismissed. Um, youth are dismissed. And the adults will open up to Jeremiah 29. Everybody say Jeremiah 29. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. Uh, if you are watching on live stream, we apologize for the, uh, the light coming in from behind. We got, we, we're, we're working on that. We're going to get that taken care of. Amen. And uh, uh, we do have more light on my face this week. So uh, last week it did look like I had a glory halo. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. Yep. Amen. 
Jeremiah 29. We'll go down to verse 11. This is a verse you, many of you are familiar with. Hallelujah. I know my thoughts toward you, saith the Lord, that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now the translations say a hope and a future. God says I have, <clears throat> God's thoughts towards you are to give you a hope and a future. Can you say glory? glory. You know, we, we get this idea, you know, God's sitting up there with a fly swatter waiting for you to make mistakes. So he can swat you, hallelujah. I mean, and crush you, and that's, I mean, take you down from making a mistake. But the Bible tells us his thoughts towards us are to give us a hope and a future. See, God called you, God ordained you, God anointed you for service in the kingdom of God. And the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. The gifts and callings of God do not change. What about people who backslide, who, who leave and don't serve God and, and, and violate God's word? The, God, the Bible says this, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He still called them. The anointing to do the work is still there. Amen. I, I said amen. amen. Yeah, but, 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 but what do I do? You serve God. I said, you serve God. Can you say amen? If, you're, if you've backslidden, if you've walked away, God still has his calling upon you. And he had bought and nursed it, and it grew up together with him and with his children, and it did eat his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was to him as a daughter. In other words, it was, it was a family pet. Okay? It was a family pet. It, it, you know, that's what it had become. And there's a traveler came into the rich man. He sp uh, spared to take of his own flock and his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was coming to him. He took the poor man's lamb, dressed it for the man that was coming to him. Hey, what? I got, he, got, he got a flock out here. He said, I'm not going to mess with him. Go get that guy's. He could have had any woman in that city that was single and married all of them. But he wanted the one that was the wife of Uriah instead and took her from him and killed him to get her. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, that man that has done this thing shall surely die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, You be the man. Now, that's not King Jimmy, that's Ed. King Jimmy, King Jimmy goes, thou art the man. You know, that's just love the way the, the King James always poetically says it. It's, hey, it's you. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king. Uh, I, I got, actually, I don't have all this in my, in my uh, computer notes. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have to go find it. Amen. Y'all with me? Anybody gone home? Who loves Jesus? All right. That, thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king of Israel and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And if it had been too little, I would have moreover um, had given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the command of the Lord to do the evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, taken his wife to be thy wife, slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword, and he goes on and prophesies over him. Best she was baby dies. But you know what David does? He strips himself of his robes, humbles himself before God, and he repents. I know it's a cuss word in circles today, but he repented. I know we don't, we don't have to repent. No, just, just stop listening to stupid. Oh, those preachers got books. I don't care if they've got books. There's one book that makes the difference. This one. And if their book don't line up with this book, it's good for one thing. Kindling. Are you here? You're going home. He repented. That baby died. Because that was the baby of a illegal seed. But then the next baby is Solomon. Why? Because God is the God of restoration. David missed it. 
<laughs> Can we say David missed it? David sinned. David was a womanizing sinner. But he repents. And God restores to him the thing that he had called him to do. David didn't get to build the temple. Solomon did. His seed built the temple. God will can. So Bible people missed it, folks. See, we think if somebody misses it, that's it. They're toast. You're over. It's done. Finite. I mean, fin. I mean, you know, you're, you're, I mean, that's it. Forget it. You're done. You missed it. And when I got drunk, I smoked some dope. I shot up. I ran around with some women. I can tell you this, that the God of heaven, the God of mercy, the God who even while you were dead in your trespasses and sin, quickened us together with Christ and raised us up with him and made us sit together with him in heavenly places, hallelujah, that God is still God. And you could have missed it. You could have made some big mistakes. You could have gone down a path that was detrimental. And you thought that your future, that your calling, that your anointing, that the thing God wanted you to do is over. But I have news for you today. If you will turn your heart once again to the Lord. If you'll do just like the prodigal son. And wake up in, in that pig, pig trough eating the slop of this world. And say, my father's servants eat better than this. And get up from that place and come home to father's house. I'm going to want to know, you to know something this day. That he's sitting on the front porch. And when he he sees you coming he's going to get up and run and meet you and put a robe on your back and a ring on your hand and kill the fatted calf and have a feast glory to God because you're once again on the track for your purpose and for your destiny and for your calling glory to God hallelujah my God is the God of restoration hallelujah hallelujah can you say amen praise God Richard Roberts used to preach he's the God of the second chance Ed preaches he's the God of the second chance the third chance the fourth chance hallelujah if you'll keep turning to God God, God will keep turning to you. Praise God. God will make it work out. Hallelujah. He'll get you back on track. Hallelujah. He'll get you back into your calling. Glory to God. He'll get you back to where you belong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ever been traveling and take a road map and take a wrong turn and you're going down the road you're going, where am I? Where am I? None of this is familiar. I don't know where I am. This don't look right. Da, 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 da. And after three hours you stop and ask directions. Because your wife's been telling you for two hours and 45 minutes to stop and ask for directions. And you finally break down and stop. We were in Paris, and we were driving around in Paris, and um, we, we, were, we were looking for um, the Quai de Issy, and uh, we, 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 we got kind of turned around. We were, following what we, we were following the map, and we thought, well, where is it, where is it, where is it? And, and the thing was, there was no sign coming from our direction to tell us where it was. So we go down and we, get, we pull into a, a, you know, a, a BP gas station there in, in, in Paris. Oh, pardon moi, Paris. And I go in and I say, pardon monsieur, um, j'ai un peu, uh, j'ai un peu, j'ai, what, je n'ai pas un peu français. Parlez-vous anglais, s'il vous plaît. He goes, yeah, or yes. He speaks English, I'm saying. Universal language. Hallelujah! So, look, I, I, um, we, we were looking for the, the Quad de Issy, you know, the Campanile Hotel. Um, but it says, he says, oh, it says, go back this way, two blocks. Well, when we went back, there's a sign. Coming the other way, there wasn't a sign. So if I just stopped and asked directions, I would have gotten there quicker. Because we rode by there several times, kept, kept going round circles, around the blocks, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, finally, when he told us to go this way and turn right there, when we got right there, there was a sign. Drove right straight to it. Hallelujah. But, you know, my wife's going, ask, stop me, ask for directions. I'm thinking, who am I going to ask for directions? I'm an American. I speak Southern. <laughs> Even if they speak English, they might not get it. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, dude, do you know where I am? All right, I'm, you know, of course, then I come in there and say, you know, uh, tell him I don't speak English. I, I mean, he's French. I speak English. I say, to, went to the hotel. When I got to the hotel, I, I did that. I went, ah, bonjour. You know, that's a big song for uh, Monsieur Taylor. Um, je n'ai pas, uh, je, je, je n'ai um, je n'ai pas, um, je n'ai, je n'ai pas français. Parlez-vous anglais, s'il vous plaît. And she looks at me because I'm, I'm kind of getting, I can do it better when I'm not trying on television. I really do. Yeah, that's my kids. I do. I do much better. Hallelujah. And she looks at me and she goes, Oh, but your French is so good. 
And I looked back at it and I went, oh, but that's all I know. <laughs> she got a big laugh. I got a big laugh. And then we got our room. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, Papa, Papa, I'm for say, you know, you say that. Just and I say, well, I'm um, just a just a, um, just a little, très peu. Yeah, just a teeny weeny. It's an itsy bitsy teeny weeny little bit of Frenchy eeny. Okay, <laughs> don't even ask where that song came from. If you know, shame on you. Anyway, the yellow polka dot bikini, the itsy bitsy. All right, and so God. We're going to have to close here and pick up next week with some other stuff. God can get you back to where you belong. And when you ask God to forgive you, and you repent before the Lord, and I'm not talking about just, hey, I'm sorry I got caught. I'm saying, you know, your heart. See, godly sorrow worketh repentance. What kind of godly repentance? That which you are sorry you've displeased God. And the Father will never backhand you when you come with the repentant heart. But he'll wrap his arms of love around you. And he'll tell you how much he loves you. And he'll tell you how, how lovely it is to have you home. And he'll tell you that he still has his calling upon your life. And that he's going to walk with you. You know, he'll start, I mean, he might start singing in the garden. Come to the garden alone. You know, you might say, and he walks with me and he talks with me. God comes, begins to minister his restoring power. And in David's case, he gave him Solomon and said, this is proof. Now, one person said one time, preacher in our church, I had to get him corrected because they said something. I thought, oh, my God, are you, are you, are you in the left field? That Bathsheba was God's will for David, and how do you know Solomon? No. Bathsheba was not God's will for David. How do you know? The first baby. I don't even need that baby dying to tell me. The fact that he looked on another man's wife to lust after her, and the prophet came and said, you could have anything, but you wanted this woman. He didn't say, oh, you know, if you just waited long enough, you could have had her. That's what this person said. He just got out ahead of God because of Solomon. No. You've met, you, 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 you need to stop preaching. Amen. Stupid stuff like that. Solomon was proof that God had forgiven and restored David because of his penitent heart. And God said, I can use a man who's repentant and calls him a man after my own heart David the son of Jesse because he was repentant yeah he messed up royally are you here I mean he put, he put messed up on steroids but God looked into that place said I'm the God of restoration I'm the God of reconciliation. I'm the God of returning you to your calling. And took him. He became the greatest leader Israel ever knew. And I want to tell you today that nothing you've done has disqualified you from what God's called you to be. It might be ministry. It might be working in the church. It might be different things. And I want you to know this church has not been disqualified from our calling. Because we went through a rough place. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Every week, it started, it started a, oh, not that long ago, but every week on a Sunday mornings, I get a text message. Have a great service. You may wonder why I text almost every Sunday. It is because I care about you. And know that this is a day when you need encouragement. The pastors need to be encouraged on, on Sundays. They need, because, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. Pastor Hagen, you get a text from him every Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, and I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure you may have in a, in a group text or sending out to, you know, but, but that's, that's okay. I'm in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I get a text message from my pastor.
telling me that he's, he's, he's for me, they're praying for us. Amen. Encouraging us. Amen. We need, we need to take courage. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And we need to say, you know, I may be look sidetracked. I may look like I haven't made it. It may, look like, may, may not look like where we're supposed to be. But God is not moved by what it looks like. Dad Hagen said something one time and, um, in the tape series I was listening to. He said this. He said, he said when, when the gift of special faith is involved, you can try to doubt and you won't be able to. He said, he said yeah, yeah. I tried to doubt. Tried my best. Couldn't do it. Because it was spoken out of the gift of faith. Not just you know, faith we get from you know, feeding on the Word. And, you know, that, that's faith. But the gift of faith is an endowment of the Spirit. He said, he said when, I, when I speak by the gift of faith, he said, you can sit there and try it out. I don't believe that. It's going to happen because it was spoken. But see, God, see, that's how God is. When God speaks it, it's done. God called you. God established you. He's not moved by your stupid. He's not moved by your actions. What do you mean? Your action can cause consequences, but his calling is still what he called. His purpose for you didn't change. And the moment you repent and return, you're right back on track for what his purpose and calling was. There are ministers sitting there right now. You're watching me this morning. I guess you are, but I, just, I said that. I didn't. But you're watching. And God says, I have not forgotten you. My calling has not departed. My destiny for you has not been abated. You will fulfill your calling. Just turn back to me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. They're watching. God says it to you right now. Why are you crying? Just go. God is a good God. God's favor and God's love and God's life. He does not withdraw. So let's run. Next week we're going, we're going to talk about some other things. I know we got just this one. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving